put on record. Okay, so last time we finished on the second proof of the formula for the Catalan numbers. Without using the formal power series. And uh, so this proof is not very hard, but it is a little bit tricky. So you, you can see that when there is the previous lecture, it wasn't the end of the lecture, and I was a bit confused. I uh, miscalculated something. So uh, I, will exp I will start from the beginning of the proof. And it will be not so, it will, it will be not very hard to understand. But I think it's hard to uh, it was it was hard to just uh, construct this proof. So uh, we can so we will look at the Catalan numbers as uh, pass from uh, points zero zero to uh, points n n that will goes over the diagonal. So for example, here we can have like this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. So we have exactly five paths from zero, zero to n, n going right and up over the diagonal. And we want to prove that Cn is equal to 1 over n plus 1 of 2n choose n. OK, here is the proof. Uh, first, first observation is that if I look at the uh, whole different path from 0, 0 to n, n going right and up, so if I want to go from 0, 0 to n, n going right uh, and up, so right or up, so I have exactly two steps, and I want to go from 0, 0 to n, n. Uh, so uh, I can generalize this and if I have this grid and I have a rectangle with form of, um, so with sides M and N correspondingly. Uh, so if I want to calculate the number of all paths from zero to M N, um, I can imagine this as, so my path, the length of the path will be m plus n. And so I have m plus n steps. And I have exactly uh, n steps up and m steps to the right. So how many, how many paths do I have? So can somebody answer? Can someone answer this question?
Okay, so maybe someone has suggestions. How many paths do I have from zero zero to m n? So I have n plus n steps, and I need to go n steps up and m steps right to the right. Mm. So maybe we, we m plus n choose m. Yeah, of course. So times yeah. Okay. Times what? M plus n choose choose m times n plus n choose n yeah yeah so uh look i have exactly m plus n steps so for example mm -hmm. if i here i have like seven steps m is equal to seven and then equal to four so i have 11 steps and i want to look exactly as four steps to the up and seven steps to the right so i have 11 places and i need to choose four of them to be up and others will be to the right. So this is exactly the polynomial coefficient of two parameters or I can write this as the polynomial coefficients of um, some of them over, over each of the uh, these parameters. So for example, if I have, if I leave not only, not on plane, but, but um, in the three-dimensional space, then so I have uh, three different uh, dimensions. So there will be a polynomial coefficients of three parameters because I want to go uh, right, up, and f further. So I, I had I don't know how, how to uh, um, de define it. So but here I can just use this uh, formula. Sir, so, so will it be m plus n choose n? Yeah. Times um, m choose times um, m plus n minus n choose m. Yeah, but the second one will be. It's just one. It's just one, yeah. So it's just exactly m plus n over n, or just the polynomial coefficients. So uh, if, yeah, okay. So for example, so for example here. So, yeah. Uh, so what about if it's m plus n choose m first? It will be the same. So it is, it is equal to m plus n over m. By the oh, oh, yeah, symmetric um, properties. Yeah, yeah, of course, so. because you can just choose uh, what the steps are up or choose what the steps are right. Yes, yes. And so Sorry. the other should be uh, the um, different. different. Mm -hmm different routes, yeah. So if they're up, so so we can choose either four, four, four positions to, to go up or seven positions to go to the right. Okay. So, so yeah. if you're just choosing up or right, how come you get the whole path? Uh, sorry. You're just choosing from M plus N, you're choosing N, which means you're choosing the number of ways to go up, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, then how come it's the whole path? We need the whole path so for the yeah, path yeah. to go but, up but, and right. Yeah, yeah, but but if I choose the the positions where I go to the up, then other positions I, I, I need to go to the right because I have exactly seven steps right. So if I choose... Ah. Oh, so yeah, okay, okay. okay. So you just choose this and automatically that's done. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I can I can determine what the other paths are. So if, 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 the, if the steps are going up, so yep. this will be determined what other steps are going to the right, yeah. Okay. So if I choose, for example, so here, here, green dots are going to the up, so I need to choose these red dots as going to the right. Yeah. So, okay. So if I turn to the question, so if I want to go from zero, zero to an end,
there will be exactly a two n of uh, choose n such paths, all paths from zero zero to n n. If I'm going only to the up and to the right. I don't know how to do you need to use or or and because I go uh, as either either up or right, but non to the other directions directions. Uh, but here I want to count not the old path, but only only those that I go over the diagonal. This is my goal. So I want to find the formula uh, for the Catalan numbers. Uh, this path. Uh, going up or right over the diagonal. So instead of count these numbers, I just use the subtraction principle and count all the bad paths. So all the paths that I uh, going under the diagonal. So if I look, so I can I can just count all the bad paths that are going uh, under the is the diagonal. So I want to count if I if I can find the formula for the all the bad paths, then I can subtract it from the two n choose n and go the formula for the Catalan numbers. And so here I can use the uh, symmetry or reflection reflection method. I just reflect this path. So I uh, look at this path. So maybe I can write, I can. Uh, explain it into the a little bit bigger picture so here i have the diagonal diagonal and i want to so i can just imagine that i have path that goes sometimes under the diagonal. Then I look, if it goes under the diagonal, that in, intersect with the diagonal under, 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 the, under the green there, the main diagonal. And then I can reflect all, all the path after the first intersection from this line. So I can choose this part of the, my route and reflect it. Uh, over this uh, blue diagonal. So for example, if I have, uh, so I can maybe give another example. So if I have like, This part again, I can look at the blue diagonal and then reflect it. So I choose all the so I look at the first intersection, it is here, and then reflect all the paths after this over the After the first intersection, so take the bad path, uh, find the first intersection with the blue diagonal. And then I go to the reflection of the this path 
from the first intersection to the end. So I can denote this point of A from from A to point N N. So here the A is the point of the first intersection. And uh, so what should I get? I get if I do this, I will get the path from zero zero, but it will end not on N N but on the reflection of this point over the blue diagonal. And so here's a point will have uh, the coordinates n plus one and minus one, yeah? Is that right? So uh, I make from that path, I obtained the path from zero, zero to n plus one and minus one. And so can we can we make uh, so now we have the function from the all bad path to the all paths from zero zero to n plus one and minus one. So can we get um, in uh, inverse inverse function. So can we have uh, can we so we can we want to make one to one correspondence between all the bad paths and paths from zero zero to n plus one and minus one? So if we start from the arbitrary path from uh, arbitrary root from zero zero to n plus one and minus one, so here zero zero, here we have n plus one n minus one, and so I can write the arbitrary root from going only up and right from zero zero to n plus one and minus one. I can do the following. I can, uh, so I can write the green diagonal, the main diagonal. Then I can write the blue diagonal here. And then I just reflected it, the, uh, reflected it, um, the path that goes after the first intersection. So I find the first intersection, it is here. And then I can reflect all the way after the after that one and so i can get new root from zero zero to an end and it will be the bad it will be the bad root because it will intersect under the green diagonal so if we start from pass zero zero to n plus one n minus one then find the first intersection with blue diagonal. So it it will of course intersect with the with the blue diagonal because uh, we have the starting point will be uh, to the to the over the blue diagonal and the end point is under the diagonal. So there will be at least one intersection. And so it will be the point A. Here I can write the point A. And so all the paths from A to N1 and plus one, I can reflect it over the blue diagonal. So I can reflect the path. From A to the n plus one and minus one over the blue diagonal and get the bad path. So I will get the path from zero zero to n n n going up and right. And I have at least one intersection to the blue diagonal, so it means that my path is bad, so it goes under the green diagonal. So I just uh, prove that I have one-to-one -one correspondence, one-to-one -one correspondence between the bad path, subjection between the bad path and the path from zero, zero to n plus one and minus one.
Okay, so maybe do you have some questions? Do you understand it? More or less. So I want to prove that the number of I can count the number of bad paths because I can give the bijection between bad path and uh path from zero zero to n plus one and minus one. Okay. Um, okay, sir. So we're trying to count the number of paths from zero zero to n plus one, n minus one. Yeah, but we already we already have the formula for it because I already proved that if if I have all mm -hmm. all, the, all the paths from zero zero to n n, it's just n plus n over n. So this this guy we can count. It will just the n plus one plus n minus one over n plus one. Or I can write this this to n over n plus one. So the Catalan numbers will be the, so we need to take all the paths from zero, zero to uh, n, n, and, and, uh, so it will be to n over n. And just uh, so we can uh, forget about the best path, the number of bad paths is to n over n plus one. So I can just calculate it. So I already find the formula, I just need to uh, make it into similar way that we have before. So if we want to look at the 2n over n, 2n choose n, I just write here as 2n factorial of n plus 1 factorial and minus 1 factorial. So if I want to make this similar to the mn, I need to write this as n minus, uh, sorry. n over n plus one to two n factorial over n factorial n factorial. So I just need to take n plus one from here and add and um, um, add n to here. So I do, need to multiply it to the n here. So I have two n over n minus n over n plus one to n over n. And here I can write this as n one over n plus one to n just n. So it is the same formula as we get from the formal power series. So here we have, oh. yeah, so it is the same formula here, yeah. Sir, so, so how did you, sorry, I don't understand the way you proved the one-to-one -one correspondence. Uh, I don't understand what that reflection means. What does that reflection mean? Reflection means that I can I can take the, the path and uh, just take all the symmetry points over the this diagonal. So for example, so uh, here I can, for example, here I take this this path, this red path, and just symmetrize it over the diagonal, reflect it over the diagonal. So for each point, I take the reflection over the blue, blue diagonal. So I can get this path here. So. Um, no, not that color. So I take here and so I just symmetrize it over the blue diagonal, I reflected it. So I just took all the points that the reflection oh. over the diagonal. Okay. Mm, okay, sir. So if I started here from the point A and going to the point n and here. So if I reflect it that way, that I will end of the point that, ref, that there will be reflection of this point over the blue diagonal. So if I, if my initial path uh, was ending at the point n n, then the reflected root will be finished at the point n plus one and minus one because it's a reflection of this point of the blue diagonal. Mm -hmm. And so it, 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 it works both ways. So if I started uh, from the path from zero zero to n plus one minus one, I can reflect it all the way after the first intersection of the blue diagonal as I as I get it here. So, if if I have the purple uh, purple root, then I have at least one intersection, and I can take the first intersection of this blue with the blue diagonal of my root, and here is the point A, and so I can again reflect it all this way. Uh, until I came to the point A. And so I have the, so I have the normal path from zero, zero to NN, but it will be the bad path because 
I have at least one point under the diagonal. So this, so I have um, a correspondence between the bad path and to the path from zero zero to n plus one plus one, and uh, correspondence between paths of n, of zero zero to n plus one and minus one and zero zero to n n. But the image of this correspondence it will be uh, only the bad path. So I and, and so it's easy to see that this um, this correspondence is inverse to each other. So this will be one to one correspondence of ejection between the, all the bad paths and all the paths from uh, and boson to n minus one. Okay, so uh, maybe okay, I can uh, illustrate it. So I can write. Um, I could give you a picture. So, for example, uh, uh, sir, I, I'm understanding, uh, but the only problem is I don't understand them. Um, that reflection part. I understand them um, how you, you want us to correspond, but I don't understand. Can you show me how reflection is? Like, how do we say it reflects over the blue line? Yeah. So, okay. So the, the concept of reflection is, is uh, so. Uh, if you can start, so we can have like just some line, then reflection means that I, if if I take some point, I can just um, pr project it on the on this uh, on this line and just continue it on the uh, same uh, in the same way. So I can need mm -hmm. to just construct this, the reflection point. It's okay. So for example, I can uh, illustrate it into. So if I take uh, pass from so zero zero to point uh, three three. Then I can just look at this reflection, and so I can write the this new way here again. So for example, I hit like this way. I take the first intersection with this diagonal. It just reflected all the points after the first intersection. Uh, again, if I have like so, maybe mm, <coughs> this one, I can write the diagonal. And then take the his reflection and so on. So, what is your actual question about the definition of reflection or how to reflect the path or something else? Uh, yes, I'm looking at how you reflected the path. Yes, why well, take the first intersection with the blue line, take all mm -hmm. the paths after that, and then reflect it all the paths after that. So, for example, here. Okay. So here I have the first intersection here. So I take all the paths here. And then all of them are reflected. Here I have the intersection here, so I take only this part, this part of the path, and then reflect it. Uh, so uh, I take the reflection only on the um, part of the path that goes out to the first intersection with this blue diagonal. Mm. No, okay, so, sir. so, for example, if I it happened in the very last time, so the last possible way, so. I just need to reflect it this small small part here. So the reflection will be going, going here. And um, the the same way I can I can construct the so if I have a arbitrary path from zero zero to n plus one to minus one, I can again uh, construct the that I just need to reflect. So take the first intersection and then goes reflection over this. So I will have the new path from 0, 0 to n. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay, so uh, if I prove it's one one correspondence, then there will be exactly 2n over n plus 1 uh, bad path here. And so so you see that uh, I can, I can, so I can. Uh, not use formal power series, but it will be a little uh, harder concept. So I have a reflection method. It's not very hard, but uh, so if you if you use formal power series, it's just formulas. So you just write the formula, count, 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 
okay, so you got the answer. But here you need to just use some methods, proof, one-to-one -one corresponses. So you can use the either way to prove it, but I don't think this, so you know, this is much simpler way to see that this is a new conception. Okay, so this is all for the Catalan numbers. So if you have, if you have no questions, so we will continue with the new concept, maybe. Uh, Little simpler, it calls partitions. Partitions. And it is very simple. We just take the natural number n and try to natural number n and try to find uh, expand it as the sum of the other natural numbers. So we want to look at these expressions such that n is equal to n1 plus n2 plus n3 plus nk. So what is the question? How, how It's called a partition. And the main question is, do we need to uh, look at the order? So uh, do we fix the order of the summons? Or we can forget about the order and just took the arbitrary order of this summons. So if you take, for example, n equal to five, is uh, two plus three and three plus two is a, uh, one partition or this is a two different partitions. But so far, uh, by definition, uh, the partition, is, is uh, just a way of is a way of representing n as sum of natural numbers so I need to like look at the partition here I think uh, of sum of natural numbers Uh, without the without the order, or forgetting about the forgetting about the order. So, for example, we want to so we we'll look at the five is three equal to two and two equal to three is the same partition. Uh, but sometimes we need to, so we can also look at the ordered partitions. Uh, means that we care about the order. So is two equal to three is not equal uh, three plus two is not equal to two plus three it is different different order partitions. Different order partitions. So the main question is, can we find the formula for the P of N, the number of partitions, or uh, OP of N, the number of ordered partitions? The number of partitions of N or OP of N or of n is the number of the ordered partitions. Uh, 
And for one of these, we have explicit formula, and for the other, we don't have explicit formula, and it's very hard to find the, the exactly number of such partitions. So uh, maybe we need to example. So for example, if you take, I know, like uh, number four, then if we have just partitions, then we have like four, three plus one, two plus two, one plus one plus two, uh, one plus three, and four ones. Yeah, did I forget about something? I don't think so, yeah? So we have only these guys. Yeah, so if I want about all the partitions, I will have much more because I can order them in, into different ways. So for example, here I have one plus one plus two, one plus two plus one, or two plus one plus one, and three plus one, and here I have only one plus one plus one, one. Yeah. So I have. Sir, for the normal partitions, you wrote three plus one and one plus one twice. Ah, three sorry. plus one and one. Sorry, plus sorry. One. sorry. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. So here I'll have. So P of four is five, and O P or O four is eight. Uh, and similar to this problem, we can uh, uh, make some restrictions. So, for example, we can restrictions for the number of summons. So, for example, we want to uh, calculate the partitions. We will have exactly five five parts, five five summons. Uh, we can uh, restrict the the number of parts. So, so, for example, we want to summarize only ones and twos and threes and take take all. So, all the partitions. Uh, should be less than four, so we can make some restrictions and also count, uh, try to count the number of um, the partitions with some restrictions. But here, so the first proposition we can, that we can prove is uh, so if I take the number of other partitions with exactly uh, k parts, so. The number of ordered partitions partitions of n with exactly k parts yeah, so we can uh, count it, and I think it will be is equal. to something like a minus one over k, I suppose. Is it right? We just, so. Uh, no, just like maybe. And over key here. So let me see. So uh, no, like like this one. Yeah. So for example, here we have. Let me check it. So if I take, for example, uh, the number of order partitions of four, with exactly three parts, it will be equal to three over two, so it will be equal to three, yeah. And we have exactly three such summons. If I want to want to look at the order partitions of the four into exactly two parts, then it will be three over one, so it will be three, and we have exactly three types here. And for this one, we have only one order partitions of, uh, in the first summons and in the in the one summons and so this and this one is equal to three over zero and three over three over three and it will equal to one. So this one will host, for example, for for the partitions of number four. Uh, so I can give you some time to think of it and prove it. So and uh, of course we need maybe some break. So I think we can 
just continue in about five or six minutes and you can think about how to prove it. Maybe someone will prove it into the visual break, okay? Um, sir, yeah. prove the proposition you just wrote. Sorry? Um, um, we should think of the proof of yeah, the yeah, proposition yeah, you, you, you just wrote. It's not okay. hard to think you can prove it into five minutes. It's not very hard, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So maybe if someone has questions, I can ask it, but I think we need, we can make a little break here.
Okay, so maybe we can, we can continue. Okay, so maybe someone has proved the formula. No? Anyone? Follow, do you have an idea? Maybe. Uh. So, so what we need to do, so we have uh, like, so we want to um, expand N into key different parts. How can we write it? So it, imagine that we have like N ones, and what we understand so what is what it means that we need to uh take another partitions is this into key parts so we need to just group these ones into some brackets so we need to exactly exactly key parts so here we need how how many possible ways of doing this and I want to just look at this picture and imagine that this is just so I want to put the one to one response between this type of partitions and just some binomial coefficients of n minus one over uh, choose k minus one. So they need to give you one or two more means, or I can continue. What do you think? Maybe you will find the answer. Okay, I'll give you one more minute and we'll catch you. Oh, okay, sir. Yeah. It starts with a hard so you just need to find so we need to so for example we have we have like 10 ones and we need to look how to can in how much ways we can describe it as different blocks so we need to take three blocks of ones i know something like that and how many ways of doing this Maybe n minus k ways of what? N minus k ways of what? Uh, of putting this um, n ones into k groups. Uh, but we we need what? We need k. Uh, okay, sir. Sir, could you repeat uh, what you want us to do? <laughs> you want to prove the proposition. Oh, and you said that for what you just wrote, you said um, yeah, you find the number of ways to... You can, you can imagine that you have like, for example, 10 dots and you need to uh, find the number of the ways that we can uh, uh, disjoint it into three parts. So I want to uh, find the number of ways. So I want to make three parts, for example. So I need to like choose the first part or the second part and the third part and i can put it uh, into different ways but how many ways i can i can do this uh, so i can uh, take this so i make three blocks from the 10 or 10 points i don't know 10 elements 
Do you understand the question? So is this the same? Uh, as, yes, I understand yeah. the question. Uh, yeah, so is this the same as the, or, as the number of order partitions to key parts? So we just need to take all the ones that are going together and that's so he will write the part like four, three, 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 four, four, uh, six, two, two, four, two, four, and so on. So all you need to do is find the number of these uh, combinations, uh, for, so, so, uh, so I, and I want to prove that this is, that's exactly the binomial coefficient. So I want to find uh, what I really choose of what. So I have like, I, I need to like have the n minus one elements and just choose the k minus one from, the, from it. So here I can, I can have like, nine elements and I want to choose, uh, so I have three parts and I need to choose two of them. So where are these nine elements and why does it need to choose exactly two of them? And so the answer is that all we need to do is just find the, like the delimiters of uh, this. Element. So for example, here I can write, so that I need to just, take two delimiters and if I if I place the two delimiters, delimiters here then after that I can describe what will be the parts so the first part will be before the first delimiter the second part will be between first and second delimiter and the third part will be after the third delimiter so all I need to do is just to find so I need to choose two delimiters and where I can put these delimiters I can put it between the numbers so I have exactly uh, here. And I, uh, so I have I, I here nine numbers. So if I take, for example, ten numbers, I have exactly nine uh, empty places between these numbers. And if I choose two of them, for example, here and here, I just put two delimiters here, and then I have uh, four, four, and two. So I will, I can have the order partition of the number of, of the number 10. And uh, the picture that I uh, write earlier, so I can imagine that all my partitions are just chosen of these pluses. So if I choose, for example, exactly K minus one pluses here, I can just, they they will be separate delimiter all my brackets so then i can take this part as three this part as two and so on and so i will have exactly k parts of my ordered partition so for each for each chosen of uh, k minus one of n minus one empty spaces or pluses i can uh, correspond the order partition of exactly k parts so for example in my previous example when i take the number four so i can write this one plus one plus one plus one and for example if i need to look at the partitions or partitions in exactly two parts i need to just choose one of these three pluses and so i have three plus one two plus two or one plus three and if i want to choose uh, find the number of order partitions into exactly three parts So it will be two parts. And here I have three parts. I can, I need to choose two, two delimiters. So I can choose two plus and I have exactly uh, three options of doing this. And so if I place here delimiters, I can write the summons as one plus two plus one, two plus one plus one, and one plus one plus two. Yeah, okay. Uh, yes, sir, it's very clear. So I have the n minus one, n minus one empty spaces between ones, and I need to choose exactly k minus one uh, delimiters. So I obtained ordered partition of n 
into k parts. Okay, so this will be exactly this. So if I if I find the uh, if I found the number of uh, ordered partitions of number n into the k parts, then I can find the total number of uh, ordered partitions. So the total number number of ordered partitions of number n is o at n is equal to so i need to summarize all the uh, all those numbers so can can someone tell me what will be the formula? So I need to find the, all the partitions into one part, two parts, three parts, and so on until the end until the partitions into the n part. So some of the number of ordered partitions into the K parts. Okay, and uh, what will be the sum? Can someone find it? Okay, so what is the sum of the binomial coefficients? So it's just the sum of binomial coefficients, and you may be familiar with it. So maybe this is two raised to power uh, n minus one. Yeah, of course, because it is a sum from k zero to n minus one of n minus one over k, and so it is just two of the to the n minus one power here. Um, so here we can find it. So o four is just equal to two into four minus one power. So it's just two to the power of three. It's just eight. So we just find this earlier to the um, partition order partitions of number four. Yeah, of course. So for the O of N, we have exactly the formula for the number of partitions, but uh, for the for the just usual partitions, we don't have such explicit formula and it is maybe complicated. Okay, so I can put the additional question. I think it will be in the home task. Maybe you may be thinking about this. Uh, so find the number of ordered partition of n into k uh, parts where summons are non negative. So what if we can take zero as a part of our uh, partition. So usually, if uh, usually uh, yes, yeah. And I wanted to ask you a question, sir. In combinatorics, isn't zero a natural number? Uh, like n choose zero. Yeah, it's it is a tricky question because sometimes it is better to look at the zero as natural number sometimes it doesn't so in some form so uh I usually usually i use the concept of natural numbers without zero and uh so if i, if I use zero as a natural number i just usually take as non-negative integer numbers but 
I think if, if you are okay with that, then we will use this notation, but we can choose it if you feel oh, so. I was just asking, sir. Uh... Yeah, yeah. yeah, because because here I, I need to, if, if I talk about partitions, I need to take only the number uh, with the greater than or equal than one, because if I take zero as a part, then I can have infinite number of uh, partitions yes. them because zero is, so I just can add zero, cannot add zero, it is that, that matter. So, uh, here, I, I mostly talk about the natural numbers that are greater than equal to one, yeah. Okay, but sir. here, if we fix the number of the part, we can assume that some of the summons are zero, because, for example, here we have, like, we can put all four into three parts, or into two parts, and just take four for zero and zero for four, and so it's, it will be it will be a fine number of such sort of partitions, so you can just try to find it, and so this will be uh, also some combinatorial numbers, but maybe you'll, you'll try to find this and so we have some problems you can ask me. Okay, uh, so what about the usual partitions? It is useful sometimes to write them into some um, geometrical way of describing this partition. So if you have, like we uh, have arbitrary partition, of n into the numbers n1, n2, etc., nk, then we can write the so called Young diagram. And this is a different possible way of doing it. So uh, the concept is very easy. We just uh, order the summons into non decreasing or non increasing way. So we can just rearrange them such that n1 is greater than uh, n2 is greater than k. And then uh, for, uh, we will uh, write the number of the dots or number of the cells is equal to this n1, n2, etc. and k. So for example, here I can, uh, if I use the dots system, I just put the n1 dots into the lower level. Then I took the n1, n2 dots into the, the next level and and three dots into in the, this level and so on and the last one will be in key dots. So for example if I take for example five I can write this as uh three plus two and two plus two plus one and so here is the young diagrams for this uh partition so sorry uh so again I can I have the summons I can order them and then I can just look uh, at the so the greatest will be the uh, the greatest number of uh, of this of the parts will be the uh, ground level. The next level will be the second sum, and so on. And sometimes uh, it is useful to write them as cells. So we have two different notations for the. We can just find the. Uh, we can write this figure diagram and so and so sometimes they wrote it from the um, greater to the, so uh, sometimes we put the the greatest number of the of the parts in the, the first level and so on so there are different uh, types of writing the young diagram but I think we'll use this notation okay so so how it will be it will help us to uh, prove something. We can, uh, maybe we can, we cannot find the formula for the number of partitions, but we can find, we can prove uh, some theorem about the types of the partitions. So for example, uh, the first proposition that I prove is that the number of partitions of n into exactly k parts is equal to the number of partitions uh, where all the parts uh, 
lesser or, or equal than k. Or maybe maybe I'll, I'll, I'll try to be more where the maximal part is k. So, for example, what I mean here is, uh, for example, if I take like six, and I want to uh, look at the partition, but I have exactly two parts. So I have here six is equal to five plus one, four plus two, and three plus three. Uh, and I can also look at the number of uh, partitions of n, where the maximal part the maximal part is two. So how can I imagine it? So I can take all the all the twos, or two plus two plus one plus one, or two plus one plus one plus one. Yeah. So here, all the all the partitions where the maximal part is equal to k. So if I take if I expand uh, one two in the uh, the last the last two in the ones, then the maximal part will be equal to one. And so the condition is not hold, uh, um, is not hold anymore. So here I have exactly three partitions when I have two parts, and exactly three partitions when the, the maximal uh, part is equal to two. It's equal to k. Okay, and how can I, so here uh, from the description, it is not very easy to see because I have different partitions. One partition, I have exactly two parts to the other partitions. I have the maximal, the maximal part is k. But if I use the Young diagram, it will be much simpler. But so, uh, so let us uh, imagine all the pictures. So here we have like five plus one will be like this guy. 4 plus 2, it will be this guy, and 3 plus 3, it will be this guy. And here I have 2 plus 2 plus 2, it will be this guy, 2 plus 2 plus 1 plus 1, it will be this one, and 2 plus 1, 1, 1, 1. Here I have, so here I have the partitions into k parts, and this partition with maximal part equal to k. Okay, can someone just look and, and see the one-to-one -one correspondence between uh, these two sets of the partitions? This ones and this ones. So if you s um, maybe rotate the partition into k parts by 90 degrees or something it's going to be the same as yeah it is, it is the same the same the same method that i used before it is just called, yes sir it's it's the reflection reflection so we reflect it over a yeah we can horizontal line or vertical line or no no we, ref we reflect on the, so uh, here you see that we have like similar, similar, uh, what is the word here? So, uh, for, see, we have similar form of the partition. So here we have like, you see that we have here the recta uh, rectangle two by three, and here we have the rectangle two by three. And here we have like this, uh, guy, we have yeah. five and one. Yes, and here we have five and, five and one, and here we have four and two, and here we have four and two. So how can we uh, go from these ones to these ones? It is easily we can reflect it all the main diagonals. So we we can just write, for example, this partition, then write the great diagonal, and then make a reflection over this diagonal. So if I do this, I can, so this point will go to here, 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 here. So this point will go to there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we reflect it over the diagonal, okay. Yeah, yeah. And so we can get the uh, other 
partition. So it calls the uh, also also it calls the transposition because you so uh, but and this is exactly so. Uh, but maybe very when you transpose a matrix, you transpose it over the another diagonal, another main diagonal. But here we can use this one. So we can use the trans position. It goes from uh, uh, diagram delta to the diagram delta, delta transposed, delta t, delta t, and uh, so we just reflect on the main diagonal. So if we start from the, if we start from the partition uh, with exactly k parts, it means that the height of this of, uh, of your diagram will be exactly k. So uh, it will have the height exactly to the k. And if it, if we transpose it, if we have to, if we have, uh, if you reflect it on the main diagonal, the number of dots will be the same. But now we have the restriction over the uh, the number of the dots in the first row, and this is just exactly the maximal part. So we will will have uh, partition with uh, with k points in the first row lower lower row and so it is exactly the partitions where we have the maximal part is equal to k and so uh, and another, if, if we start from the partitions where the maximal part is k, it means that the lower the lower row will, will contain exactly k points, and so after the reflection, we have exactly k rows, uh, k rows of the partitions. So it it uh, works both ways. So we have one to one correspondence between the partitions we will have exactly k parts and partitions with the maximal uh, part is equal to k. And of course, if you have the partitions with the uh, k k parts or lesser, then we have the partitions where the maximal part is k or lesser. Yeah. Okay. Any questions? It's okay, sir. Yeah. Uh, also, we can use some similar technique to the proof. So, what 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 else we can do with the with the diagrams? For example, we can Mm, take the diagram, take the diagram, and just add uh, and new column uh, to the to the edge. Or, for example, we can if, or for example, we can add the. additional uh, row here. So using this um, this method, we can prove the uh, this proposition. So the number of partitions of n into k parts is equal to the number of partitions of n minus k into mm, k or lesser k or lesser parts and so the proof is the following so we just need to just take in the what do you mean so if you have k parts and so this number of the roads is just equal to k. 
And so we can forget about the first column here. And uh, what do we have here? Here we have the partition of A, A, A minus K with uh, K or lesser parts. And so if we, if, we, if we transpose it, if we use the reflection, then we can construct a diagram where we have, so it will be also A minus K, but each, each of these parts is lesser than K. Ah, sorry, sorry, I, I just, uh, so I can write this off into the lesser than K parts or uh, the number of partitions of A minus K where all parts are not not greater than k. So I can use so if I if I forgot about the first column, I can go to the n minus k into the k parts or lesser. And so if I transpose, I can use the previous propositions to look at the number of partitions of n minus k into where all parts are uh, less uh, k or Maybe that's okay. Okay, sir. Yeah. Uh, okay, so we have six minutes left. Okay, so maybe I have another one task for you. One of the next examples exercise, and then we'll finish. Okay, so uh, finish for the day. Okay, so I want to find how. How many partitions are there with the following restrictions? So uh, there are k parts or lesser, and each each parts is uh, lesser or equal to l. So, for example, if I have k equal to three and L equal to two, then I have the following partitions. Uh, so I have maximal number of parts is three, and maximal maximal amount of the each part is two. So for example, I have this diagram, this diagram, this diagram, this one, this one, this one, and this one. So I want to all parts be less to a lesser, and this will be uh, not not greater than. So here we have seven, but I want to find the answer when k is l is uh, arbitrary. Okay, so I can give you like maybe five minutes to think about it, and uh, after that we will discuss the solution. So maybe someone has questions about the uh, partitions or the young diagrams. So if you want to ask something, go ahead. What is the answer? K into L plus one? K into, uh, could you please repeat? K? K multiplied by L in plus one. Ah. Uh, no. So it is not. Uh, so uh, am I right here? So I can write all the partitions. Yeah, because. For example, if k is equal to one and l is equal to one, it will be exactly one partition that the formula gives two. And if it's um, if k and l is uh, much bigger, for example, ten and ten, you will have uh, plenty, plenty number of diagrams available, and it will be 
greater than just the product of them. Okay, okay. So, because um, Oh, I think I, I forgot something. So, ah, okay. <laughs> because uh, here I forgot about, I, I think that I'm mistaken. So I have here this one and this one also. So it will be just nine, not, not seven. Yeah, sorry, sorry about that. <clears throat> Um, sir? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it maybe k times 2 raised to the power l? k times 2 to the power l? Yes. But he will have 9 and we'll have 3 times 2 to the power 2, it will be 12. This formula must be similar to it, 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 it will be symmetry of k over l because I can just transpose all the diagrams. And so the number of partitions we have less than k parts and each part is not greater than l, it's the same that partitions of the l is not, not greater than l, uh, l, l parts. We, each part is not greater than k. So if I change them places, then we'll have the same formula. So your formula must be symmetry over k, over k and l. So th this this one this formula is good okay. because because I can change k place of k and l and and uh, it will be the same formula. So so the number of dots on the first row must be less than or equals to the number of dots on the second row, right? Oh yes. Oh yes. Okay. Sorry, sir. So so here, for example, we have uh, for the first row we we'll have one, and for the, the next row we'll have uh, the one or, or greater. And here in the sort, we need to make more. Yeah, so we'll have the same or greater than the, in the previous row. If we if we go from the um, up to down, so from the to the down to the down uh, to the row to the row below under under the previous row. So. If we have look at this dimension, that we have increasing is increasing number of the dots. Okay, so maybe I have a, I will give you a hint. So uh, what we need to do, so we need to do what restriction do we have? So here, here we have one great restriction that we need to put this diagram into this box. So we cannot go outside this box. We need to take all the young diagrams that are containing with these restrictions. So if I write all the these diagrams here, then I can write, so I will write the... So, so it's six choose six plus six choose five and six choose four, is it like that? Something like that, but not not exactly the. So, 
here I can I can have so if I uh, I can forget about the Yen diagrams and look only about the border of this Yang diagram. So here I have so I live in so the rectangle of two by three, and I want to uh, look at the border of my Yang diagram. So maybe it you remind of something that we um, learned just today. It is similar to some something uh, possible ways of going into rectangle, no? So maybe this looks like the number of ways of going up and left, which is um, m plus n choose m. Yeah, yeah, of course. So, so, so if, in this if, case, you have, if, if you have the path, so here we have the path from uh, uh, left, left down corner to the upper, uh, down right corner to the upper left corner, going to only to the up and to the left, yeah? So we want to look at the path from the points as we as we see in the beginning of our lecture today. So here the number should be equal to uh, k plus l over l. Or so k plus l choose l. Yeah, k plus l choose l. Yeah, but here we'll have some problem because if if we calculate this number, then we'll have five times four over two. It will be ten. And here we have only nine diagrams. So what our mistake here? Why why we have different number of no we have the wrong answer. We forget our uh, one diagram or, or, or no? Oh, can you can you can you find the uh, the path that we do not use into this? So we have here nine paths, and we have exactly uh, 10, ten paths. So what paths did, do we not uh, use in this uh, young diagrams? Is is zero possible, sir? Is zero where dot is, yeah, where yeah. zero dots? Yeah. So yes. here, so here, we, we, what what path is left is is just this path that goes through the uh, left border. And so, yeah. uh, if if we have the partition of the zero, then we will have ten. And so, if you cannot count, so uh, is this is the question: if if we have the empty empty uh, young diagram as diagram or not. So, if we not consider this is young diagram, then we need to the answer will be k plus l over l to choose l minus one uh, without the empty diagram. So, what do you call this diagram? Young, young diagram. Young diagram, young. Like a young man. Uh, it it is uh, it is a surname of the mathematician. Oh. It uh, so uh, he used this tick young uh, young diagram and young. Uh, I know how how to uh, correctly pronounce this in English. So maybe I'm, so maybe it's young. I maybe I need to I need to look at the 
Uh, it's okay, sir. I understand. Uh, young yeah, diagrammers. but he used so he has some te technique to uh, he, of young tableau. So he put some numbers in the cells and thus used them to count some combinatoric uh, construction. So it's so it's like have used different techniques. So it's young young diagrams uh, using in some. Highly, highly uh, math uh, science like uh, representation theory, high algebra. So it's it's very modern notation. Okay, so if we forget about the empty Young diagrams, then will be the answer will be k plus l over l minus one, and so if, if we use the empty, so it will be k plus l over. Okay, so I think it's uh, all for today. I I will try to prove your home task as much as possible, and I will I will make the new home task for the next two weeks. I think maybe today or tomorrow. Uh, okay. So if you have any questions, you can ask me now. And so if if you have no questions, and I think we can finish for today. Um, thank you. And see you next Wednesday. Okay. Goodbye, sir. Bye.